All right, welcome to another community cast. This one was submitted to me by Demogod, so thank you for sending it. I'm doing something uh, a little bit different here where I'm going to show the card in the front so you just know who is uh, in the game. Uh, I'm not going to uh, read it out other than to call out the people who are in the Dark Clan, which is MR Defender uh, playing the Wood Elves, King Luan Vuitton playing Bretonia. And then we've got Demogod playing the Dwarfs. If you hear like snoring sounds in the background, I apologize. I'm dog sitting a dog right now. He has problems with his trachea, so sometimes he makes uh, noises. But uh, that's neither here nor there. So let's jump right into it. Uh, this map is uh, MP River, Blue River, I think it is. And uh, so it's a balanced map. Should be a good time. Let's jump into it. I'm going to hide this image file now. So going over uh, deployment, we have uh, Wood Elves, or sorry, <laughs> Dark Elves pretending to be Wood Elves deployed over in the woods, Manticore, uh, Chill of Sontar, and for the Lord choice we have Malkith on foot, I believe. Very rare sighting there. We've got Azheg the Slaughterer flying up in the air. Over here we have uh, Plague Priest, Doomwield, uh, Hellpit, uh, Gracier of Ruin. On the far side we've got Sartorial, and uh, uh, over here we've got... Uh, the uh, Bretonians, this is Louis Vuitton playing the uh, Bretonians. Uh, Demo God is playing the Dorse, locking up the center position. And in the back uh, is uh, Mad Goblin playing Tomb Kings. And it looks like he's decided to leave uh, everyone else to take the fight. And he's going to just uh, build a house over here and uh, hope that that's enough. So certainly going to put a lot of pressure on his allies here to do a lot of the heavy lifting while most of his units remain idle. Uh, we have Durthu in the woods. This is being repped by MR Defender, so cool choice there. Uh, I don't consider Durthu to be the most competitive of uh, Wood Elf Lords, but he's certainly not bad by any stretch of the imagination. So over here, our Manticore is going to get pinned by some Wild Riders, so MR Defender doing some nice stuff there. And he is going to take these uh, Cold One Night Charge right in the front, so not sure exactly what uh, the Dark Elf player Snickers Hunter was trying to achieve there by going straight into some Spears. That's certainly going to be very costly for him. It does look like some Wild Riders got caught out a little bit here, but they're going to get pulled in. And yeah, the Manticore is already done for. Uh, meanwhile, the Hydra is creeping his way up the front. Azteg the Slaughterer is kind of uh, poking his head around, trying to figure out where it's best to go. Hasn't decided if he wants to engage with the Wood Elves or with the Dwarves. Looks like he's leaning towards the Wood Elves. I do want to point out that the uh, Greenskin player, Snick, uh, has brought, you know, like one, two, three, four Goblin Big Bosses in addition to Azheg. So definitely not a tournament legal build, but uh, this is a casual game, so I guess he's just having some fun there. Over here we do see a master, a rune of master ruin, mass. Oh my God, I can't. Master rune of wrath and ruin. That's a mouthful. Uh, snaring this Gorby's chariot. It looks like it got stopped right in front of this line of thunderers, so it's going to get deleted right off the bat. Very painful for him. Over here, Bretonians are starting to uh, just scout out the woods, trying to see what where the chaos forces are. Meanwhile, Sartorial is going balls deep into the Bretonian line, like he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't need any support. Feeling brave. Over here, uh, we have some Plague Monks getting run over by the Chariots. That's pretty much all the contribution that's coming from the Tomb King player right now. His Ushapti Great are still out of range of everything, although the Hell Pit has just walked into range now that he's chasing after the Chariots, and he's certainly going to be punished for that. I suspect he will be pulled out, but yeah, this Gracie of Ruin is massively overextending as well, so he's going to be getting sniped out by both the Shishapti Great Bows and the Dwarven Cannons. The Dwarves are holding firm on the front flank, on the front line here. Only three units of Plague Monks and an idle Gorby's Chariot to deal with. The Plague Monks certainly do not have the armor pen, even though they do have an anti infantry bonus, so they're going to struggle to, I think, get through the uh, Stalwart Dwarves. Over here, it looks like some Harganath Executioners have pushed in with the support of some Cold One Knights, and the tag team has been able to break off two units of MR Defender's Eternal uh, uh, Guard. Over here, the Deepwood Scales providing some Overwatch fire, but Durthu is certainly uh, rough in rough shape right now, having been pressured by Malkith and no doubt the uh, Goblin Big Boss Goon Squad. These Goblins have gotten into the back line, and they are, with the support of the Greenskins, uh, essentially wiping out the rest of what MR Defender has. Now he does have the Spellsinger of Life who's just chilling in the woods glowing with her, her, her green hair, uh, but there's not much left in the way of foot troops. 
for MR, so I think he will need to be looking to fall back as soon as he can and try and re retreat behind the wall of the doors. So the left flank is going pretty rough for uh, MR defender, but the right flank and center are going like a piece of cake for the dwarfs, it seems. The Hellpit Abomination has been snagged, uh, and with the uh, presence of Setra plus the Tomb Prince and the withering fire from the Ushapti Great Bows, that uh, very expensive unit is going to go down. It looks like the Plague Priest has also met his demise as well, uh, unless I'm not seeing him. Oh, maybe he's... There's a Plague Priest over there. I don't think that's the... Is that the General though? No, that's a different one. So it seems like maybe the Skaven General has gone. You're looking at the leadership starting to waver for these uh, Plague Monks. They're not going to want to stick around much longer. And these regular Dwarf Warriors are certainly holding the line. Now Plague Monks do have more speed, so I would have liked to see them try and get around the back uh, and maybe outmaneuver those Dwarf Warriors. But yeah, now let's zip over here to this side where King Lu and Viotur I can't say his name. Fashion Louis. Fashionable Louis. Big L. Uh, fighting Sartorial. The arrows are going to Sartorial. Sartorial does have that missile resistance. But uh, damage over time plus the presence of, pa of the Paladin is certainly going to add up. It looks like uh, there is going to be a, maybe a final transmutation going down on the Paladin. But he is isolated, so that's not going to be the most effective use of that spell. Certainly it will do damage, but... Uh, I mean, I think the Paladin is still in a better position here. So Sothoriel is going to try and pull back, dive through his troops, see if they can bog down the Paladin, and he will have some success doing that. But uh, I think it is going to be uphill for fight for Chaos with that Lord on the on the brink. And I'm sure the Green Knight is going in there to, to finish the job. Uh, the Gwog has been popped, so that's a really nice uh, benefit for the uh, Dark Elf, Orc, and... Skaven and Chaos team, this Chaos, the Chaos will certainly benefit from that. Of course, there is a lot of inactive units over here that are not benefiting from the WOG, and they certainly should have been trying to push up and uh, take take out these dwarf units, and it looks like they're going to be doing that shortly. There are some Death Creepers that are going to try and chase the rest of MR Defenders units off the board. A uh, very expensive unit of Hargadath Executioners is idle here, not being used. Uh, so meanwhile, the Tomb King player is still getting a, a good lay of the land. Uh, I'm not really sure uh, how much fun he's having just sitting there, but it seems like he's having a good time, I guess. And over here, Doom Wheel is inactive, so I mean, maybe at this point the player has given up. You can see the balance bar is shading pretty heavily, and I don't think that there's, uh, there's much left, less hope for them. It does seem like Sartorial is going to try and scoot away, uh, but Setra is going to be hot on his tail. So yeah, I guess the Tomb King player's plan was just to micro his chariots and leave everything else to protect his uh, Ushapti with great bows and then just hope his allies would do the rest. So uh, seems to be working for him. So good strat. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he didn't have uh, as talented teammates if it would have gone so well, but... Here we go. So looks like the Dwarven infantry is starting to get chipped off and it's getting a little thin. The Dark Elves and the Greenskins have rotated around uh, and the Goblin Big Bosses over here are trying to bail out Sartorial and that's going to be really important to keep the leadership on the ground. So uh, it looks like Setra did get herself into a bit of a tough situation there but she just did a, a little god fight there and pushed away all of the uh, goblins and uh, it with the support of the carry-on, perhaps she will be able to, to escape. Setra is super, super fast on that chariot. Uh, it looks like he's got a speed of about in the 80 range, I guess. Um, so maybe he can break out of here. The leadership of these goblin big bosses is pretty low, and I'm, I'm impressed at how well the combination of the Tomb King, Prince, and Setra have done. I mean, it was very attritious. Setra's very, very expensive and did lose half of her his health, etc. I don't know, undead. When you're undead, does, does sex matter very much? Are the undead having a lot of sex? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah. Ooh, did you see that little that little fist come out of the ground? That was pretty hot. I like that. Power fist. Right in the buddy. Ooh. And that pretty much concludes this game, so I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for sending that replay demo god, and uh, we got a few more uh, coming along the way. I'm going to just hit that final fast forward, see if we can get to the end screen. We'll just go over the uh, kill counts real quickly and, and uh, wrap this one up in a bow, as we do. So stalwart dwarfs, uh, you're looking at the 
mid-range with the kills, but these organ guns were free to fire the entire game, as was the uh, cannon, and it got mad chevrons. I don't think he put in, uh, what is that, six chevrons? No, one, two, three, four, five chevrons before the game uh, even started, so yeah. Over here, MR Defender, uh, he kind of got run over because he was fighting two armies, so maybe he should have deployed a little bit closer to his allies at the same time. Uh, because he was over there, I guess everything else was away from the dwarves, and it gave the dwarves a long time to, to shoot, so not the worst in the world. Over here, Faye was, I guess, pretty conservative. The archers really, I think, were able to chip away at um, Sartorial, who went in solo. Um, and I don't know if there's too much more to say to that. I think the Goblin Big Boss has kind of got wrecked. And yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to hit you up with some other community casts soon. Take care, bye.